Hey, are you like me? You got all these cable wires that are connecting your cable box to your modem and whatever, but they're just a mess sticking out under your TV. I can't stand it. If you're like that, stick around. I'm going to show you how to make these disappear. Gone. gone. If you like projects like these, you might want to subscribe. I'm always doing some kind of project and I like to share with you what I've learned. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. So we have a little wiring mess here in my daughter's new home. A couple of issues. This was supposed to be pre-wired for cable by the builder. It didn't get done. For some reason, they put a phone jack in behind where the TV was supposed to go. So subsequent to that, we had to have the cable company come in and they ran the cable in, but ran it in down here instead of up higher would have where it would have made more sense to be able to hide the wires behind the TV. So now we got this mess here. So my challenge today is to try to find a way to hide all these wires but do it in the simplest way possible. I'll show you what we've got here behind the television. Here's the bracket that holds the television up and you can say that they did pre-wire an outlet here to put a television up so I can get a lot of the plugs in. So I think what I'm going to do is put up some cleats and a shelf right here to hold the majority of the television equipment and go from there. So I have a piece of 1x8 here that was used for a different project. It's painted black but that's okay it's going to be up behind the television and the frame that holds the television in is black anyway, so that'll all match. Um, as I say, it's a one by eight, so it's about seven and a quarter inches across this way. I cut it larger. I didn't want it to fit exactly in the corner, so I cut it a little bit larger so it'll stick out from the corner here. I'll be able to run my wires that I need to up and down behind the shelf. Now next what I'll do is take a second piece I'll line up the edges here and then I'll just draw a line here and cut this at a 45 degree angle such that I can make this even wider. It'll come out from the corner of the wall about uh, 14 and a half inches so that'll leave me plenty of room behind the TV. I need to put a modem on here um, I need to put the uh, Wi-Fi on here uh, and some plugs and that should be all that goes up here and I should have plenty of room for that. So here's what that corner shelf looks like after I cut that second board. Now what I want to do is come in and use some pocket screws to join these two boards together right here so it's more like one solid platform. So here's the Craig jig that I use for doing the pocket screws. I think this is called the master version um, and I really like it. If you don't have a Craig jig, you should think about getting one. I don't have a tripod with me. I'm gonna do my best to show you how you drill this out um, for the pocket screws. And uh, hopefully the picture won't be too jittery. So what you've done there is you've drilled down through the, that board and then it drills a hole that allows the pocket screw to sit in behind the board and that drills out um, just a little bit more to get it through. So that's where the head of the screw will sit right there and then it'll push its way into the second board here and you won't see it at all. So that's actually what the pocket screw looks like 
and I'm going to do three pocket screws, which should be fine. Okay, I've drilled three pocket screws. And the other thing you'll notice is that I have clamped this board on both sides to the table right where the seam is. Because sometimes as you run a pocket screw in here, it can pull that board up or down just a little bit so they're not level. Now that's not incredibly important on this because it's just a shelf that's going to go behind the television and you're not going to see it anyway. But it's a good practice to clamp it and keep it nice and flat. Another thing is that oftentimes what you do is run a bead of glue between these two boards right here to give it additional strength. Um, I have found that on a project like this, I really don't need the glue. Um, these pocket screws are really strong and they're more than enough to hold it in. So I'm going to seat my pocket screws, just get them started in their little hole. And then you take your driver here. I just use a small 12 volt driver. This is the driver. This is not the impact driver, just a regular driver. Uh, one important thing to note here is that I'm doing this on the bottom side of the shelf. So when I put that in, you won't see these screw holes from the top. Uh, and you really, really won't even be able to see them. Okay, so we have all of our pocket screws in. And you can see that it makes this one solid shelf. And it's plenty stiff. That's not going to go anywhere. It'll be easier to work with that. So here's what our little corner shelf would look like when it's mounted in there. So what I'm going to do now is just to make a couple of cleats to run along the underside to hold it up. I cut two one by two boards. These will be the cleats that go on the wall that the shelf will sit on. This is sitting upside down now. When I put it up, it'll probably make more sense. And then I cut the ends of those cleats at a 45 degree angle so it would match the angle of the shelves. So here are my two simple cleats that I mounted. I just found a stud. I used two and a half inch screws to hold them in, thinking that I've got a half inch of drywall to go through, three quarters of an inch of wood to go through. So that's an inch and a quarter, so that'll leave me an inch and a quarter of screw to go into the stud. And those things are anchored just fine, they're very tight. So here's the shelf actually sitting on the cleats. Now we're going to start moving this jumble of crap up there and try to start simplifying this. All right, we are making significant progress. A lot of the stuff that was down below is now hidden up behind the television. What we have left here is the cable box. And you can't hide that because it has to have a line of sight to the remote in order to be able to change channels and switch it off and on and control volume and so forth. And the phone, you can't hide that up in behind because you may need to use it. It's really just a backup. Most everything that they use in this house is cell phone, but nonetheless, you don't want it hidden in case you need it. So what we'll have to do next is design another shelf that will be in behind or right underneath the television and but just low enough to where you can see the items that we need to see the phone and the remote but high enough that we're still hiding all of the wires and it'll have to be probably white I think we'll do something white which will match the trim, or we may do it the same color as the walls. So that's our next step. I'm going to think about that a little bit, and then I'll come back. Well, here's how it finally came out. 
I made a second shelf exactly the way I made the first shelf, except that the second shelf, I put a piece of cold bolting in front and then faced this piece right here out so it went to the wall, painted it the same color as the wall so it blends in very nicely. The only wire that's exposed is the cable wire here and I will come back and find a way to tidy that up a little bit. But a very simple project, simple shelves to make, and it does a really good job of hiding all the equipment and wires and so forth for your television. Hope you enjoyed the project and give it a try. It's an easy one to do.